So we talked in the introduction video to how grades work within a summit platform about content assessments, which are the focus areas. They are the parts where the students actually engage in learning the content that will help support what they do in projects. Now, remember, this accounts for about 20 to 30 percent of their grade because our philosophy is that it's important to know things to be a well-rounded person, but it's more important to be exposed to them and to be able to apply that knowledge. So we deprioritize the value of the content uh, in the grades and prioritize the value of skills. But it is hard to do well on the project without knowing anything about the content. So if you hover over any of the projects in the year screen, you will see a list of the related focus areas which students uh, should try to learn in a, uh, as they're trying to work on the project in order to support them with that project. In fact, if you click on the project and scroll down on the overview screen, you will also see a list of those there. And if you click on any of those focus areas, it will take you to the focus area screen. Now, back to the year page, you can see in the year page a list of all of the assessments that the students will have to take for that course for the year. Remember, power focus areas are the ones that matter the most. They're the main content, the main standards the student has to hit. And additional focus areas are a little additional standards, which are also important. Now, these are the power focus areas account for about you know, uh, 12 to 19 percent of their overall grade, while the additionals are less than 10 percent. So three to nine percent of their overall grade. So it is possible to get a pretty good grade without never doing additionals. But I strongly encourage students if they have the time to do those challenge focus areas are additional focus areas, even which are not included in the calculation of their grade. But they're there to challenge students that want to go deeper um, or to support them even further on the work that they do on their projects. If you, by the way, hover over one of the uh, focus areas, it will also list which projects that focus area is uh, associated with. It will also show you the score the student got, how many attempts it took to pass it, and the last time they passed the test or took the test. Um, this student has been attempting quite a few number of times. So if I was their mentor, I would be working with them on better strategies to study for the test. Let's talk about that idea of attempting multiple times. So if a student doesn't pass the focus area uh, on the first attempt, they get a chance to do it again and again because the questions are always different. Um, and what they have to do is reflect on why they did not pass it and maybe use a different strategy or a different resource to study for the content assessment before trying to do it again. And we do work with them throughout the years so to make them stronger on studying so they don't have to do that so many times. If a student is behind, and I can try to show you an example of that right now, you will actually see that the focus areas would be, the color of them will be changed. So if the, if the, focus, if the student is behind where they need to be on the current course, the focus areas will show red because the line has overtook that focus area. Notice that the additionals do not change to red, only the power focus areas do so. Now I'm going to click on that actual focus area and show you a little bit of what's inside of them. And the, whether there are additional focus uh, power or challenge, they always kind of look the same. So any content assessment screen will look like this. You will have at the top a diagnostic. I always strongly encourage students to take the diagnostic for the first thing that they do. It helps them identify if they're already good on that focus area, which sometimes can be a good idea to find which one to work on next. And I also like them to take that right before they attempt the test as a, pre, as a little practice before doing the real test again. And on the right side, you see the different objectives that the student has to know and a list of the key terms and the fact that they have to get eight out of 10 in order to pass. Remember, even though it's only worth 20 or 30 percent of their overall grade, uh, all the focus areas combined, in order to pass each one of them, the bar is higher. So the bar is lower on the content than most other places. But to make up for that, it's you need to get really good grade within each assessment to get the mastery for that assessment. Now, at the very top, there's usually introductory materials, which includes study guides and main resources. But each objective also has a list of videos, uh, PowerPoint presentations and slideshows, readings, handouts and checks for understanding to help the students study. And this is repeated for each objective. And then at the bottom, you have the content assessment. You can see how many times the student took it and that the student has been struggling to pass this. And so you're going to encourage the student to use a different strategy before they hit the button to request and try again. But when they do try it, it shows them which area they need to focus more in order to actually do better next time. In this case, objectives two and three. Right? And if the student already passed the test, they can show. They will sometimes show up here as a, as a student that already passed, and it could be available to help this student do better on this assessment. So it's a really intuitive system. Now you don't have to learn alone. Teachers will do workshops. Uh, we can work with friends. You, teachers will support you in the classroom. But it's something that they focus on during their self-directed study time to support the projects. I'll see you in the next video.